recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania. I thank the chairman. And just like the last amendment, this amendment recognizes the fact that our country is out of money. We're, we're borrowing money to pay our bills and we're paying for things that we can't afford, paying for things that these folks can't afford. Mr. Chairman, this amendment reduces the authorization levels in Section 101, which is airport planning, Section 103, which is operations, and Section 1111, which is research and development. The authorization levels in the underlying bill represent a significant increase from the levels set by Congress in the 2018 reauthorization bill. For example, the underlying bill raises the authorizations by significant amounts from FY23 to FY24, 101 by 650 million, 103 by 1.2 billion, and 1111 by 41 million dollars. This amendment reduces the growth of these authorization levels while still increasing, still increasing the funds authorized for FAA, resulting in a net savings of nearly $5 billion. So we're going to raise the level of understanding and recognize inflation caused by, caused by out of control spending in this place. We're going to recognize that and understand that the FAA still has to continue to operate, but we're not going to raise it so much. Our national debt is out of control, and it is in this mindless, rapid growth of spending in Washington that has put our nation on the brink of catastrophe. Moreover, this massive increase in funding is not resulting in a safer or more efficient FAA mission. That's their mission. Safety. More efficiency. It instead represents a significant misallocation of resources to woke and green missions at the expense of safety and financial sanity. We must reorient the FAA back to its original mission, ensure the funding we provide to them is appropriate to meet the moment while not wasting taxpayer resources. With that, I reserve. Gentlemen reserves, for what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? I rise to claim the time. I rise to claim the time in opposition to the amendment. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I rise in opposition to this amendment, which would slash funding authorization levels for the Airport Improvement Program, the AIP, FAA operations and maintenance, and research and development efforts. The Transportation and Infrastructure Committee overwhelmingly agreed that AIP funding must be increased to $4 billion annually in order to fund critical programs across the FAA and invest in our aviation industry. This amendment would slash that funding level and impede the full funding of grants and projects to address the pressing infrastructure needs of airports across the country. It would also significantly decrease FAA operations and maintenance funding, which jeopardizes the effectiveness of the agency amidst growing demands placed upon the aviation industry. Finally, this amendment cuts agreed upon funding for the FAA's research and development activities on aircraft safety, on environmental impact mitigation, on airport infrastructure, and on human factors and new airspace entrants, among other important issues. Cutting this critical funding would undermine U.S. aerospace innovation and our leadership in the global aviation sector Moreover, it would put public safety at risk. And for those reasons, I oppose the amendment, and I urge my colleagues to do the same. And with that, I will uh, uh, reserve the balance. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I thank the gentleman from the other side of the aisle. But I want to clarify, it's not a cut. We're actually increasing the spend, just not as much. Now, I know in Washington, oh my goodness, who knew the request was up to $4 billion? I imagine they'd take more than $4 billion if we gave it to them. We're broke. Hello, America. Wake up, everybody. I got a news flash for you. We don't have any more money. We're borrowing money to pay the bills. We're borrowing money to pay the bills. We're borrowing money to pay for things that we can't afford. That's what we're trying to fix here. Look, if you want to save some money somewhere else and spend it more here, I'm all ears. Let's talk about it. But something has to give. These people can't afford anymore. And they're not getting more out of this. Like, look, I've been in appropriate, I've been in the room. I used to sit on appropriations in the state house. I know how it goes. Well, we spent this much this year, 
or last year. We're just going to add some more this year. Nobody goes through line by line and says, oh, well, this costs this much more because concrete costs X and labor costs Y. Nobody does that. They just add money to it. It's all arbitrary, and we all know it. Everybody in this place knows it. That's why we should spend less, because we don't have the money to spend our reserve. Gentleman reserves, gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker. If we've got the money to um, shore up our nuclear defense capability, more and more nuclear weapons, uh, we certainly have the ability to keep these people up here safe as they fly in and out of Washington, D.C. Uh, families, uh, business people, the flying public deserves Congress to fully fund what consensus has arrived at. This is what Americans want us to do. They want us to arrive at consensus. And this FAA reauthorization bill is a bipartisan effort. Uh, and all of the uh, figures were arrived at uh, in a bipartisan way. And we present this to the American people for their protection and for their safety. And I would, uh, I, I, I agree that there may be cuts that may be necessary, but not uh, to uh, this particular program. And, and with that, uh, I respectfully uh, disagree with, uh, with my friend on the other side of the aisle, and I'll ask my colleagues to uh, join me in being opposed to this amendment, and with that, I reserve. Gentleman reserves, gentleman from Pennsylvania, you're recognized. Mr. Speaker, can I inquire as to the time remaining? How much? One and three quarters minutes remaining. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman. Since my good friend brought it up, it was a bipartisan agreement. So the world knows that it. it was a bipartisan agreement here, known in Congress as what's called a four corners deal. Two on their side, two on our side. There are 435 members of Congress. I wasn't involved. I wasn't one of the four. You weren't one of the four. Nobody else here was one of the four. They decided to spend all these billions of dollars. They didn't come to me and say, well, we need this much for concrete and this much for research because they decided and this is what's in the bill. And heaven forbid anybody challenge it. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, we do not have the money. We should reduce the authorization. It's still an increase, just not as much as it recognizes the fact that our country is broke. With that, I yield the balance. Yields, gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Uh, I thank the speaker for uh, uh, indulgence uh, here. Um, fact is, we've got the money, and we need to spend this money to promote uh, the public welfare and the public safety. That's what we are doing uh, with this expenditure, uh, with this authorization for that expenditure. And uh, I ask my colleagues to join me in supporting public safety and the f safety of the flying public. We have the first class air aviation system in, in the world. Uh, we need to keep it that way. We have to invest in it. That's what this is all about. Uh, we don't need to divest uh, and put our public at risk. With that, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd ask that my um, colleagues vote uh, to oppose this amendment, and with that, I will yield back. Gentleman yields.